Greenpeace is pushing for, together with WWF, Christian Aid, um, and others, is um, uh, what we're calling greenhouse gas emissions performance standards, just like you have for fridges or cars. Um, this is what they introduced in California um, under Arnold Schwarzenegger, ironically. Um, uh, and you set a cap of the amount of emissions of CO2 per kilowatt hour of electricity generated that can be emitted, and it rules out coal. And what that does is it provides certainty to the market so that they can invest in something and know what standards they have to meet. But it also incentivizes the alternatives. So what you've seen in California is a massive wind energy program, a massive concentrated solar energy program. Uh, there haven't been any nuclear um, proposals because the economics don't stack up largely. Um, and there hasn't been any coal. And because the law is quite strict in California, it means that you can't import um, electricity from uh, coal plants outside of the state. And that's had this ripple effect through, through America. And so in the last 18 months, because as Leila mentioned, the reason why all these coal proposals are coming forward is because of the high price of oil and gas throughout the world. And so what we're seeing is a massive, it's not just in Britain where there's coal plants for the first time in three decades, it's also right around the world. So in America, there have been 151 coal plant proposals in the last 18 months. Uh, and encouragingly, 64 of them have already been blocked including um, several of them on climate change grounds. Uh, and so in the state of Kansas, which is so backwards that the teaching of evolution is banned in schools, <laughs> they're blocking coal plants on climate change grounds, which kind of puts Gordon in perspective. <laughs> um, literally, that's where we're at, is that there has been a really vociferous grassroots movement in the states, which has managed to stop new coal plants from happening, including in Kansas, including in Maine, the law in California, as I mentioned. What's encouraging is that um, right around the world there's been really strong resistance to coal. So in the Philippines, there's coal plants have been blocked. Germany, coal plants have been blocked. And it's only really now in Britain um, that we're, we're having to take on coal plants here for the first time. And really, even the government were quite surprised that the coal plant plans were coming forward because they just didn't anticipate it because they never think ahead. And so they never realised that when the price of oil and gas went up, they, they would suddenly become so much, so attractive. So in kind of policy wonk terms, what's happening at the moment is that the Tories, in their attempts to outflank Labour, tomorrow are going to announce um, minimum greenhouse gas standards for, for, for power plants. So this is what we've been pushing for. Um, and it's also what the Royal Society have been pushing for and, and various others. They're actually going to set the cap at 500 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour which is um, the same as what they have in California. But unfortunately, it's not as good as it sounds. Um, in theory, that would rule out Kings North and it rules out new coal plants because new coal plants are about 780 to 900 grams. Um, but it's not actually going to because they're going to say you can have a little bit of CCS latched on the side to bring it under the standard. This is the carbon capture technology. And we'll use public money to pay for that to ensure that you can build your coal plants, which is obviously not good. <laughs> A bit about where we're at with this carbon capture technology. As Leila said, there is no commercially operating CCS plant anywhere in the world. Um, but uh, the, there are, the European Union has plans to build 12 demonstration projects. Um, this is like R and nobody thinks, including the UN, that this technology is going to be deployable on any large scale for at least 20 to 30 years. So, given that the UN says that we have to have global peak and decline in carbon emissions by 2015, it's kind of an irrelevancy. It's just totally irrelevant. Um, but arguably it could be useful in 2030 or 2040 when you could retrofit it to power stations that exist in places like China or India, which is a, a separate discussion from the one that we're having over Kings North. And I think that's critical because, as Leila said, the way it's being sold in Britain is that, one, we need the, to keep the lights on, and we don't. But secondly, it's, we, we, we're putting all our hope in CCS technology when nobody knows if it's going to work on any large scale. Nobody knows where the storage sites are, there's still issues, uh, safety issues, and there's huge economic issues, uh, which is kind of the other main argument from the government, which is we have the emissions trading scheme and it's going to sort everything out. And that's obviously their answer on Heathrow, it's their answer on, on roads, it's their answer on anything that emits carbon, basically. It's, if you have your cap and we trade underneath that, it doesn't matter if we build these new coal plants. But what they're counting on is that the carbon price in the European markets will go sufficiently high that carbon capture technology becomes 
like more cost effective than building unabated coal. But nobody, nobody thinks that's going to happen for years and years and years. And as Leila pointed out, no one's actually demonstrated CCS on any large scale at the moment anyway. So they're selling us something on the basis that maybe hypothetically at some point in the future we might be able to fit a technology that hasn't been existed yet, if it becomes economically viable, which nobody thinks it's going to be, um, to keep the lights on, but nobody thinks that we need it to keep the lights on because Gordon Brown's already committed to, for, to meeting the energy gap through renewables. 